All right, everybody, let's talk about progressive metal, which is a topic that comes up quite a bit on my channels. And uh, from what I understand, I've upset a few people. I did a video uh, a couple years ago called The Problem with Progressive Metal or Progressive Music, I forget which one, which was one of my most disliked videos. And the kind of essential premise of that video was that prog, and specifically prog metal, was pushing rock in a direction that I think is dangerous and unproductive, specifically that I thought a lot of progressive metal was kind of taking the genre further down this road of guitar music, music written by guitarists for other guitarists. And that was like point number one. And point number two is that progressive has kind of just become a synonym for technical, right? So if the original meaning of progressive it, not just in metal, but progressive music in general, was to kind of throw out the conventions of the standard like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, you know, whatever, like throw out this pop song structure, you know, and, and the, the conventions that radio dictated that like a song had to be, you know, three minutes long. And they said, you know what? F that, we're going to have songs with 22 different parts that are seven minutes long. And if we want to put a minute and a half keyboard solo in the song, we're going to do it because we want to explore the boundaries of, of rock. But that kind of stopped being the thing. And progressive just started to mean like, let's play gent riffs for six minutes. <laughs> that was sort of the essence of that video. And uh, a lot of people didn't like it. I agree with this. The OG prog bands were actually doing weird progressive shit, not necessarily the hardest stuff to play. And that was sort of, that was the point I was trying to make is that, you know, you see the bands in this collage here, like Opeth, and Meshuga and Voivod, Queensryche, Dream Theater, or as I like to call them, Dream Theater, those bands were doing something genuinely different at the time. The point that I was trying to make is that being truly progressive is not copying Meshuga and Opeth and Voivod. Being progressive is about exploring new directions, trying new and different things rather than just copying something that a progressive band did before. So I thought, because I love all of you guys, I consider you all my friends. And I feel like I really stepped in it. I upset you guys, just like I upset the Ska fans. Just Well, I've upset pretty much everybody at this point. <laughs> but I said, you know what? I'm going to give this another try. I'll check this out. So I asked on Twitter what prog bands I should check out, what progressive metal bands I should check out and see if maybe you'll change my mind. And it's going to be a little bit tough because for anybody who doesn't know, uh, you know, I'm, I would say I'm pretty deep in the world of progressive metal on like a professional and a personal level. I'm friends with a lot of these people in these bands. I've worked with a lot of these bands like Periphery and Between the Barrier to Me and uh, Intervals. My company has worked with like Meshuga, Opeth, Gojira, Carnival, like a lot of these bands. So I'm, I'm pretty deep into the world of progressive metal. And I actually like a decent amount of it. What I don't like is all the genting and a color groom shit, but let's check it out. Let's see what songs you wanted me to check out. So I asked here, I said, I'm going to do a learning to like progressive metal video. What songs should I check out to convert me into a fan? So let's see, I picked a few. The first one here from The Work of Jar, North Lane, Carnival, Meshuga, Gojira, and Periphery. I'm going to skip these because I feel like that's pretty well-known stuff. I think Meshuga, at least their old stuff is great. Gojira, I'm I'm okay with Gojira. I, I think that I don't love Gojira as much as other people do, but I do think they're a good band. Periphery, I think are also really good, but I'm going to skip that because I feel like it's kind of, um, it's, it's, it's been known. How about this? Alex Peak says, most everybody's entry into prog metal dream theater, pull me under, or again, as I like to call it, dream theater. Now I heard this song when it came out 30 years ago or something like that, but to be honest with you, I haven't listened to it in a long time. So let's give it another shot. Let's check out Pull Me Under by Dream Theater. Let's check it out and see. Gotta love that juicy late 80s, early 90s, clean guitar tone. Ooh, I, I don't know what's going on here, but anytime I see this, we've got a, a clock and some sort of a, a, a book open with these empty jars here that I assume contained the ingredients to potions. This must be the crafting station. When I listen to this music, I feel like I'm a wizard and I feel like this is my crafting station and uh, I love crafting systems. So you know what? I like this so far. 
Okay, some pretty good riffing for, when did this come out, 1990 or something? Pretty good riffing for 1990. 92, okay, that's when it came out. 92. Oh, and he's wearing a Napalm Death shirt. That's right, I forgot about that. I remember when this came out and I, I was stoked to see that because this song was actually kind of popular. This sounds like Cynic, doesn't it? Like sort of a less, a less crazy Cynic. I kind of like this. One of Ola England's favorite bands, I believe he and his wife originally bonded over their love for Dream Theater. Wow. Wow. I don't believe that story. I think that's a lie because I refuse to believe that there's any woman on the face of the planet that likes Dream Theater. So that can't be true. What is this guy doing? I feel like there's some weird stuff going on under the covers here. Is this old man jerking off in front of his crafting table? Jeez, you knew we were going to film a video today. You couldn't keep your hands off it just for like one day while we're filming the video. And do you have to do it in front of the crafting table? Ah, oh, grandpa. God, you're so weird. What are you doing? He's charging the crafting table. <laughs> That's right. He's got to build up his chakra to charge the crafting table. No, son. No, 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 no. I was just a, I was just accumulating chakra. It's not what it looks like. That's just my chakra uh, in that Kleenex. There's mana everywhere. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, I haven't listened to this in a really long time. Um, and I kind of like it. You know, I think the vocals are maybe the weak point here. Other than that, I think this kind of just sounds like a, a little bit more like calmed down version of like Cynic or Atheist. Uh, vocals a little bit weak, but I, I actually don't mind this. And this makes me think that maybe I should go listen to some other Dream Theater because, uh, yeah, I think this is pretty cool, especially for 1992. Not bad. If it had a catchier hook, it would be even sicker. Yeah, I agree with that. It needs a hook. But, you know, I think this is not bad. All right. Uh, another band that a lot of people have recommended to me over the years. Rain says, Fear of a Blank Planet by Porcupine Tree is a very good album. A lot of people have recommended this band Porcupine Tree to me over the years. I've never actually listened to them. I know that the prog people like them a lot. Um, my understanding is that this band is not metal though, but let's check it out. This is uh, Trains by Porcupine Tree. Not metal so far. Where's the genting? Mm. I hear no metal so far. I'm skipping ahead. I'm already bored. I skipped ahead a minute and it's still doing the same thing. Pink Floyd for people who aren't in nursing homes. Huh. What's progressive about this? Uh, the singer is not good. This sounds like the theme song to some like 90s christian sitcom you know like uh which is the one i forget the name of what's that 90s like teen drama about the family kind of going through life as seventh heaven that's right seventh heaven yes this reminds me of something that would be like in the closing credits of seventh heaven i don't hear any metal in this at all i don't hear any prog either other than the song being six minutes long i don't hear any prog I'm going to pass on this one, people. Number one, I uh, do not believe this is metal. Number two, I don't think it's prog. Number three, I don't think it's that good. Steven Wilson produced the best Opeth albums, though. Well, that's great, but this is not Opeth, and uh, I'm going to pass on that one. But uh, I know you people like Porcupine Tree. People have recommended them to me many times, uh, but I'm going to pass on that one. Okay, another one that people recommended to me a lot, of course, is Devin Townsend. The entire Devin Townsend music catalog, or more specifically Sumeria, Failure, Equinox, Slow Me Down, Genesis, Earth Day, and The Death of Music. I actually am somewhat familiar with Devin Townsend. My company has worked with him twice, I think. I've met him a couple times. I sent him an Axe Effects once. I borrowed an Axe Effects from Fractal Audio for a couple months, and they're like, hey, uh, if you're done with it, can you send it to the next person? And I was like, sure, just give me their address. And they sent me the address and it was Devin Townsend. So uh, I was like, oh, okay. So that was my brush with stardom. The time that I mailed Devin Townsend and Axe Effects. I don't know him well, but every time I've interacted with him, he was super nice, very smart, very chill. I'm a fan. Now, I have not listened to his whole discography because he is ridiculously prolific. He has put out a ton of stuff and I have not heard a lot of it, but I do think he's super talented. I will say um, the one song that a lot of people recommended to me was, uh, was this one, Devin Townsend Project Kingdom. I kind of remember this song, but I haven't listened to it in a long time. I remember this being like this live version of it went 
kind of viral a while ago. So let's check it out. I'm, okay, I remember this song. Yeah, that's right. I remember this one. Didn't uh, Sam Johnson, that like vocal coach reactor, didn't he do like a reaction to this? Or s someone did a reaction. Some like vocal coach person did a reaction to this one that was like pretty popular, right? I like those um, background vocals a lot quite a bit. Yeah, I remember liking this quite a bit actually. Do you guys remember uh, when Devin Townsend had the skullet? You remember that? He needs to bring this back. He looked like an actual, like, literal caveman. I was just playing the Final Fantasy 16 demo, and in, like, the first mission you go on, you get ambushed by goblins in this, like, abandoned town, and they look like this. <laughs> like, certified actual goblin. <laughs> needs to bring it back. I love his his vocals in this are awesome. I love this. The reason why this works for me in a way that a lot of prog metal uh, doesn't is this has actual emotion to it. It feels like he actually has something to say. And I, I don't know what he's saying. I feel like Devin's one of these people that like you actually kind of have to dig deep to figure out what he's trying to say because he's a very intelligent, sophisticated guy. He's not just going to beat you over the head with it. So I don't know what he is trying to say, but I can tell there's something here. Whereas a lot of prog metal, you know, all the imitators, I, I don't think they have something to say. I think that they just like riff and riff and riff and they throw in some like kind of fake deep lyrics about fucking, you know, solar systems or whatever, but that doesn't make it actually meaningful. You know, whereas Devin actually has something to say and that is like very clear to me yeah he doesn't take himself too seriously at all very chill guy i like this part a lot yeah i think devin townsend i mean i don't know his discography well at all when we had him on he mixed his song um genesis which has like fucking like 80 fucking parts in it or some shit like that song is absolutely absurd like it's one of the most ridiculously complex songs like ever <laughs> and uh yeah i think devin townsend is super talented i respect the shit out of him like you'll never hear me say anything but great things about devin uh i'm a fan okay how about um another band that comes up a lot is protest the hero this is from tyler holt he suggested the song blood meat I haven't listened to this band in a very long time. And uh, last time I listened to them, I was a little a little bit underwhelmed. But let's check it out. Oh, uh, okay. I guess we're not going to listen to that song because these geniuses made this video unavailable in your country, the United States. What kind of a band blocks their video in the United States of America? <laughs> Galaxy Brain Marketing right there. This version apparently works. Okay. We got panic chords. Okay, this part sounds kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Good drummer. Ooh, this is not good. Ooh, this is like progressive butt rock, which <laughs> I kind of respect because as we all know, butt rock is the best genre of music. And I feel like, like they say core now, right? It's like, you know, this is whatever, cottage core and death core and metal core. And I think now butt rock should be the base genre for everything should so should be like um butt prog or butt core or like blackened butt like I, I feel like we need to remove the core and replace it with butt and i feel like protest the hero laying the groundwork here for progressive butt rock uh this is bad this is not good sorry these guys are very good players, uh, that's for sure. Very, very, very tight. You can tell that this shit is all real, too. These are, like, very organic tones. You can tell this is not, like, super edited. These guys are very legit players, um, but, uh... Oof, the vocals, not good. The fact that everyone up here in Canada loves them should just tell you how bad they are. Well, here's the thing about the Canadians. Canadians stand Canadian bands so hard, and I'm not sure that they even know why. Did you guys know? People, Sum 41, Simple Plan, Protest the Hero, Alexis on Fire, all deep state plants. It's the truth. There is a literal law that in Canada they have to play, I think it's like 30% 
um, Canadian music. Literally, the government mandates that they must play Canadian music on Canadian radio and TV, which is the reason why everybody in Canada thinks that Protest the Hero and Alexis on Fire are like the most amazing bands of all time. They're agents of the deep state, people. You're not getting me. I've seen the documents, people. I know where Protest the Hero came from. I know where Alexis on Fire came from. You're not getting me, Obama. You're not getting me, Justin Trudeau. You think you're going to turn me into an Alexis on Fire fan, Justin Trudeau? Think again. Yes, that's right. Protest the heroes making the frogs gay. I've seen the documents, people. It's true. All right. Well, let's check out what else do we have. Many people suggested between the buried uh, and me. And uh, I am going to have to excuse myself from this one because uh, I'm friends with Tommy. I think he's an awesome guy. And I think Between the Buried and Me is cool, but I can't be objective about them because uh, he is a friend of mine. By the way, that is not me trying to like dodge the question. Same reason. I just, I can only say nice things about my friend's bands, but I legitimately do think they're very good. He's a great guy. Same with Periphery. I legitimately think Between the Buried and Me and Periphery are good bands, even though they're my friends. Okay. Another band that uh, a lot of people mentioned to me is Opeth. Root VZN said, Opeth, their whole discography is an awesome evolution based around prog metal. Zero Serotonin said Opeth, Blackwater Park album. I actually think this album is a goddamn masterpiece. I'm not going to listen to this whole song, obviously, because it is ten and a half minutes long. But this is one of these songs that... Uh, it's so good. I love this song. This, this song is an actual masterpiece. There are people who say... That, you know, song is like, oh, it's a journey. It tells a story, whatever. But like this song really kind of does like it actually does feel like uh, it makes me want to smoke weed and live in a van. <laughs> like, I don't know. It, it makes me want to be like your burnout uncle that uh, has a custom van. It's so catchy. Great performances, too. I love this album and I love this song. I feel like the problem with diving into these type of subgenres for hidden gems is you're diving into the shallow end. Yeah, that's the truth. I mean, so far you might be thinking, well, wait a minute. You've, you've said that there were so many things wrong with prog metal, but you've been complimentary of all these, of almost all these bands so far. Well, that's because the stuff that you guys are suggesting to me is the cream of the crop. Like, of course, Opeth is a great band. Of course, Periphery is a great band. Mashago, Gojira, like, of course, these are great bands. Like, objectively, whether you like prog metal or not, like objectively, those are great bands. So of course I like that stuff. I mean, I've been listening to metal since like 1990. How could I not like Opeth and Meshuggah and Periphery? Those are great bands. The problem is with sort of everything after that, right? It's like, what about all the bands that are influenced by Opeth and Gojira and Periphery, you know? All the bands that, uh, you know, rather than doing something from scratch, which is what all those bands did, like nothing sounded like Meshuggah before like Destroy, Erase, Improve. Before that came out, nothing sounded like that. Periphery, I don't know that they necessarily invented that style, but they definitely perfected it and popularized it. Opeth, nothing sounded like this before that. So, you know, those bands were all breaking new ground. That is actually progressive. And even Dream Theater, Cynic, you know, Atheist, all that shit. That stuff was actually groundbreaking and truly progressive. My gripe is with all the other bands that, rather than trying to break new ground, call themselves progressive, but really what they're doing is just aping this stuff that that's my issue um and so far i mean i think other than protest the hero and even protest the hero i would say could be good if they just had a better vocalist the the music is cool just a little bit but you know with this kind of stuff people who listen to progressive metal they don't care about vocals so you know i don't think that even matters how about this person sleepy program suggested 2112 by rush and i will be honest with you the only Rush song that I know is Tom Sawyer, which I actually think is a really good song. I have never listened to a single Rush song other than that. So let's check it out. This is um, apparently one song that's 20 minutes long, and we're obviously not going to listen to that. But let's check out at least a little bit of it. Vocals are pretty bad. Uh, this is bad. Okay, we've got a long, boring part. 
Some nice drumming there, some roto toms. Okay, this part's kind of cool. Uh, the vocals, I I'm sorry, vocals are unlistenable. When did this come out? Like 1981, 1976. I bet if I heard this in 1976, I would probably think this was awesome, but I'm hearing it in the year of our Lord 2023, and uh, it is not awesome in the current year. I'm sorry. Respect. I think Tom Sawyer is a great song. For that one, I'm going to say it's not it. Okay, this other band, Jesse Covey, suggested Atheist Elements album. I love this album. If you're listening to this album now, in 2023, if this is your first time hearing Atheist, I think you probably aren't going to like this. But this came out in 94, I think, maybe 93. And this was like very, very, very like wild shit for back then. They were like the first band to go like full kind of like jazzy prog. They used to play death metal and then they came out with this. And uh, I think this album's really cool. Vocals are definitely a little rough, but I thought this album was cool. Probably a little hard to listen to now, but... I liked it at the time. Yeah, the bassist, Tony Choi, was great. Great bassist. The coolest song, though. The coolest atheist song. Listen to this song. This song called Samba Brisa. Like, how cool is it that they did this on a death metal album? Too talented to suck like they do. Sounds like a Megadeth cover. Yeah, listen, I totally get why somebody wouldn't like this in the current year. It's kind of hard to listen to, but I think it's awesome. And then they have this song on a death metal album which I love. I think this song is great. You know, they never start genting. They never start playing metal. It's just this the whole time. I love this song. To me, this is actually progressive. You know, an acquired taste for sure. But uh, yeah, this classic, of course, I feel bad. John Nitty uh, <laughs> mentioned the classic Behold the Octopus um, from uh, this was what this was like Guitar One and one of these guitar channels. Oh, this is bad. I feel bad for these guys because this band is actually cool. Um, but uh yeah alcoholicost from nanonucleonic this is rough <laughs> One, two, three, four. this is rough these poor guys <laughs> the girls just run out of there yeah uh <laughs> this is horrible like this actual song is kind of cool, but this recording of it is terrible because there's no drums or bass that horrible tones like this is I just I just feel bad. You just cranked out what you thought was a progressive metal masterpiece in your in your mind. It sounds like dream theater to everybody else. It sounds like this. This is what your prog metal band actually sounds like. Look at that cameraman zooming in, just like, oh God, I gotta get this. Oh, I can't do it anymore, I'm sorry. I, again, I think this band is actually good. They're actually cool, but uh, <laughs> this is not the best example. I feel bad. Ugh, sorry, guys. Luffy.ysk suggested Leprous. Um, this is another one of these bands. We, we have worked with them before, and uh, I think they're super talented. I don't know that I would necessarily choose to listen to this, but objectively speaking, this band is super talented. No question about that. Great vocalist. Great. Tr I mean, this band, are, they're incredible musicians. I would not personally choose to listen to this because, you know, it doesn't really have hooks and stuff like that that I'm looking for. But objectively speaking, these guys are incredibly talented and this is extremely well done. This sounds like the soundtrack to a romance novel with Fabio on the cover. <laughs> I respect it. I mean, you you have to respect this, right? I mean, you have to. These guys are like objectively great musicians. You have to respect this. But what we're talking about here is not Leprous. Of course, Leprous is a great band. What I'm talking about is all the bands that want to be Leprous, right? If you think that you can get away with writing five-minute songs with, you know, solos and falsetto vocals and piano and all this stuff because Leprous did it. No, you were not Leprous, okay? I think a lot of these prog bands don't hold themselves to a high enough standard. Like, if you're Leprous, if you're Dream Theater, you know, if you're the Faceless, I get it. I respect it. Even if I wouldn't necessarily choose to listen to all of that, although I do love the Faceless, I respect that. But you got to be on that level. 
You can't be just like mediocre. And that's the problem is there's just so much fucking mediocre prog metal. Like great prog metal is great. And I love it. And it's awesome. The problem is that there is so much mediocre shit. And I want to play one last band that is awesome. Padtron recommended uh, this band Aviations, the song Outliers, which I'm going to play a different song. I'm going to bat for this band because I really want this band to blow up. I think this band is fucking awesome and they deserve to blow up. This is the song Safe House. I I've really never heard anything like them. And, uh... Yeah, I want this band to blow the fuck up because I think they're amazing. Everyone in this band is just incredibly fucking talented and the songs are actually catchy and pleasant to listen to. And they have great videos too. I love this band. It totally fucks. This band is fucking great. I'm going to bat for this band because I really, really, really think that once the right people discover them, I think they're going to blow up. This is like the freshest sounding frog stuff I've heard in a very long time. How isn't this more popular? I don't know. That's what I'm talking about. I want this band to be more popular. This is prog for people who fuck. Well, let's not get carried away. I mean, this level of musicianship is extremely fucking rare, even among prog bands. This part's really cool. I mean, there's really nothing else that sounds exactly like them, you know? They've got some heavy parts, some wheedly wheedly parts, the piano stuff. Very original, and much better vocals than most. Polyphia with lyrics, that's a good way to put it, yeah. Yeah, and a, and a nice upbeat vibe, too. So if you like this stuff, I very, very, very highly suggest you check out Aviations. I think, uh... I think these guys, probably the most interesting prog band I have heard in a very long time. I mean, probably since Polyphia, I would say. I think Aviations is awesome and great, and I really, really, really want them to blow up. So, in conclusion, people, I think it's a misconception. You know, I made that video about progressive metal, and a lot of people think that I hate the genre or that I don't know anything about it or something like that. I regret to say... <laughs> I regret to say it that I've been listening to progressive metal for 30 years, and I regret to say that I know a lot about progressive metal. Personally, like, I know a lot of people in these bands. They're my friends. I've worked with a lot of people who produce these albums and stuff. I know a lot about progressive metal. Unfortunately, I wish I didn't. <laughs> I wish that I could pull all that knowledge of progressive metal out of my brain and replace it with something useful, but I can't. And so I think it's one of these situations where... When you are really familiar with something, that's when you kind of see the flaws in it the most. Maybe I didn't do the best job of getting that across in the video. The real issue with progressive metal is the great bands are great. The problem is that there are so many mediocre bands. And because it gets so self-indulgent and there's like sort of inherently a lack of hooks in the genre, mediocre prog is one of the worst things in the world as compared to like mediocre pop punk is still pretty good because it's like kind of catchy and you know you can sing even if you know that it's not that good you're like eh, it's not great but i like it anyway it's like you know mediocre pizza is still pretty good but uh progressive metal is like you know it's either great or it's trash one or the other and i think the you know the genre i would say is like 0.01 percent greatness in 99.999% trash. That's what I think. But hopefully it's clear from this video that I do actually like this stuff. So please, gent shit posting, can we be friends again? Please? Can we make up? That's all I'm asking.